A few weeks ago, a viewer left a comment on one of my videos asking about sharpness. I replied explaining that I sharpen my photos using Photoshop, to which they replied and asked, why Photoshop? Can't you just sharpen a photo using Lightroom? I thought it was an excellent question which deserved a proper answer, so this week I'm going to demonstrate for you one of my image sharpening techniques in Photoshop, why I think Photoshop is the better tool for the job compared to Lightroom, and share with you some recommendations for sharpening your own photos. How's it going everyone? My name is Todd Domini. I make videos about landscape photography, photography in general, gear, and photo processing here on YouTube. Before we get started talking about sharpening and start getting deep into Photoshop, I just want to take a moment just to say thank you. Because uh, about nine days ago, I think it was, I received an email out of the blue from YouTube. I, I wasn't even following uh, my analytics just to you know see what was happening, but I, I just all of a sudden got this email out of the blue saying that this channel uh, that you're watching right now hit 1,000 <coughs> subscribers which is crazy to me. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I, I'm fully aware of the fact that, you know, a thousand subscribers on YouTube is you know, kind of like a, a pebble in the ocean compared to other people who've been, you know, doing this a lot longer and other people who are more prolific than I am. And, you know, but nonetheless, I mean, when I started this channel a few months ago, I mean, I had what, one subscriber <laughs> when I first started? And I don't know, it's it's pretty awesome. I'm really happy about it. And it's, it's you know, a pretty cool thing. So thank you, I greatly appreciate it. And uh, let's get on with the video. The first thing I wanna do is just define what exactly sharpening even is, because I think it's one of those seemingly magical settings that somehow just pulls detail out of a photo, but it's, but it's really not that at all. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna demonstrate this by just, I just have a simple image here of a dark background with a gray circle on top of it. To sharpen this image, I'm going to uh, go to Filter, Sharpen, and then select Smart Sharpen. Now what I'm gonna do is here, this has a, a large preview in it, window in it, which is pretty nice. And I'm gonna zoom in 500% so you can see the edge of the circle here. The reason I'm zooming into the edge here is because sharpening enhances the contrast of edges inside an image. What is an edge? Well, an edge is an abrupt change in brightness between neighboring pixels. So in this image, the edge is where the circle meets the background. So I'm just going to turn a mount all the way up to 500%. And then I'm just gonna crank radius all the way up to like, I don't know, somewhere around here, like 30 pixels. Now, obviously this is way overdone, but it allows you to actually see what's going on here. As I said, what Photoshop does is it targets the edge, which in the edge is a circle, and it applies a band of contrast around that edge. It darkens the dark side of the edge, and then it lightens the lighter side of the edge. So when you have, amount cranked all the way up to 500%, you get 100% black, 100% white. But if I were to say, turn that down to somewhere around, yeah, somewhere around here, then you see it's, it's a more feathered kind of effect Then it blends more with the background. It actually almost looks like some kind of weird inner glow drop shadow adjustment layer that, that you would make, but it's, uh, it's not that at all, it's actually sharpening. Uh, the next setting down below a mount, radius, is actually the most important setting. And let me just turn a mount all the way up to 500%, so we're back where we were. Now I'm gonna drop radius all the way down to zero. And as you can see, nothing is happening. No sharpening is being applied to this image at all. So a mount, all it does is just control the color. It just controls um, the intensity of that contrast that's being applied of that white and black. Radius, on the other hand, uh, is a much more important setting and it controls the width of that band around the edge. So it's uh, 30 pixels out from the edge, which is the darker band, and then 30 pixels into the edge, which is the uh, lighter band inside the circle. So in total, you get an edge that's actually 60 pixels in width. Now this is where things get interesting because Radius thickness, as you can see here in this panel, is measured in pixels. And a 30 pixel sharpening radius in one image may look different from a 30 pixel sharpening radius in another. 
The reason that is, is because in Photoshop, pixel values are relative to the resolution of the image that you're editing. Let me just do a quick demonstration here uh, to show you what I'm talking about. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to recreate the same image that we used uh, before with the circle. I'm just going to make this 800 pixels by 800 pixels. I'm going to fill the background, do a shape layer, and I'm going to make a circle that's 500 pixels by 500 pixels. Now we are going to create a second version of this image and it's going to be 3000 pixels by 3000 pixels. Again, fill the background layer. Uh, I'm going to make another circle and the circle again is going to be 500 pixels by 500 pixels. Same color, same everything, same size. Click OK. As you can see, the circle in the higher resolution image in this 3000 by 3000 image is much smaller than the same gray circle that was added to the lower resolution image. So, I mean, how can that be, right? I mean, if both circles are 500 pixels square, shouldn't they be exactly the same size? Well, the circles are technically the same size. The images that contain the circles, however, are not. Remember that this first image we created is 800 pixels square, which means that the 500 pixel circle inside the image consumes approximately 60% of the space inside the image. The second higher resolution image has a dimension of 3000 by 3000. So a 500 pixel circle inside of this image only consumes about 10% of its space. The point here is that pixel values are relative to image resolution. The circles are technically the exact same size, but the circle in the higher resolution image appears smaller because this image contains more pixels. So the core point that I'm trying to make here is this, because pixels are relative to image resolution, sharpening is not a one size fits all, set it and forget it kind of setting that you do once in Lightroom and then just export a bunch of images with. Now, obviously you can, I mean, I used to do it that way all the time, but the better way to do it is to take the time and apply sharpening values that are appropriate to the different resolutions that you intend to create for your photo. So, I mean, for example, you will probably export a photo for your website. You'll probably export for Facebook, for Instagram. Maybe you will want to print an image. That's an entirely different thing from, uh, from exporting an image for displaying on a screen. Because there's all these different uh, exports and ways of formatting a photo and all these different resolutions, the better way to handle sharpening is to apply sharpening only at the very end, after an image has already been resized, after you know what its target destination is going to be, because of those pixel values, because you will use a different pixel value for a, for a photo that's sharpened for print versus a photo that you will sharpen for Instagram, because the print just has way more pixels in it than the uh, image for Instagram. So you wanna make sure that your sharpening is tailored for that specific resolution. All right, so here is a list of some recommended best practices when sharpening photos using both Lightroom and Photoshop. The first thing I wanna point out is in Lightroom. If you open one of your raw uh, files in Lightroom and then go to the develop panel and then come down here to the bottom of the right side and toggle open detail, you will notice that there is a default sharpening value being applied by Lightroom. It has an amount of 40 and a radius of one pixel and 25 for detail. By the way, something that I did was I actually made a what I call a clean import preset. I uh, just went to one of my straight out of camera raw photos, dropped these values down to zero, created a preset called uh, clean import. And then I use that whenever I import my photos into Lightroom. That way, all of them have a default sharpening value of zero. There's no sharpening being applied at all. Again, because my preference would be to do it myself later. So just a little tip there for you in case uh, you want to just do this uh, by default to all of your photos on import instead of adjusting this on a case-by-case -case basis thereafter. 
Okay, so when you are ready to sharpen a photo using Photoshop, what I would recommend doing is right-clicking on the photo in Lightroom and then going to Edit. And don't use this first option, which is Edit in Photoshop 2020. I mean, <clears throat> it sounds like the appropriate one to use, but it's actually not the better one. Select this one down here, which is Open a Smart Object in Photoshop. Now, the image is now going to open up in Photoshop. And the reason that I'm opening it as a smart object is because a smart object in Photoshop is basically like editing a raw photo in Lightroom. It is non-destructive. So for example, I can double click on this smart object layer. And as you can see, the camera raw editor now opens in Photoshop. So I can come in here and adjust exposure and I mean, do whatever I wanna do just like I can in Lightroom. So it retains its editability. Additionally, because it's a smart object layer, if you apply something like, let me just do this, do this really quick. Uh, if I apply Smart Sharpen to it, the Smart Sharpen filter is applied as a smart filter on top of the smart object. So instead of affecting like the, the source pixels in the image and, and destructing them, so to speak, this is being applied as a filter as a filter to the layer itself. So you can stack filters. I could actually run Smart Sharpen more than once uh, if I wanted to, like if I was sharpening an image for print and I just really wanted to, uh, you know, do some pretty aggressive sharpening to it, then uh, then you can do it. And it's and it's a non-destructive, much cleaner way of sharpening an image. Okay, so now that the image is open in Photoshop, if you intend to use this for, let's say, Instagram, as I did before, go to image, image size, and then change height to 1350. Um, width would need to be 1080. Uh, this image is not formatted as a as a four by five, so you know just keep that in mind. Instagram is 1080 by 1350, but this is good enough for demonstration purposes. So we have uh, 1350 tall, and now it's time to apply some sharpening to it. Again, come up here to Filter, Sharpen, Smart Sharpen. And what you wanna do with um, images for screen is, you know, as I was saying before, just use lower values for these, like something like around uh, 0.2 pixels for radius, I mean, or up to uh, 0.5, maybe somewhere around there. Those lower, like almost like sub-pixel radius levels are much more appropriate for viewing on screen. Now, obviously there are other tools that you can use in Photoshop to be sharpening your photos. You'll see some people recommend uh, using the, uh, the high pass filter. That's one approach. There's also the really old school unsharp mask is in there, but I don't think anyone uses that anymore. So it's probably not even worth looking at. Um, Smart Sharpen though is, is really cool to me. It's, it's actually grown on me quite a lot. Not only because it has this large preview window, which you can click and hold on. If you click and hold, you see the original image. And then when you let go, you see the sharpened version. So you can actually you know, zoom in pretty far and see the difference from uh, clicking back and forth. So that's pretty cool. The other thing that I like about it is the fact that you can save presets with this. So as you can see here, I have like a preset for Instagram sharpening uh, and then sharpening presets for printing at different levels of detail, depending on what an image needs. And, uh, and it's really handy. So what that means is, is that you can save presets, you can save sharpening settings that you like, that you think are you know, appropriate uh, for your style of photography, save those as presets so that then when you go back and open an image in Photoshop, resize it, you can just quickly apply some sharpening settings to it instead of having to remember what it is that you typically use. And then of course, you know, like let's say I choose Instagram, I can go back and I can, you know, just make further adjustments to these. It's It just gives you a nice starting point when uh, editing your images. If you are sharpening your photos for print, either you know, using a printer at home or if you're sending a photo off to a lab, the thing to remember is that with print, you are always losing some detail and some sharpness because of how ink soaks into the paper. So there's always some degree of sharpness that's lost. Paper stock also plays a role in this as well because like glossy paper has a tighter grain so it displays a little more detail. Whereas like a rag paper or a matte paper, there's more, more uh, like bleed of the ink. And so you, you tend to lose more detail. So for print, I mean, you typically 
get really aggressive with it. I mean, like for example, this is my small detail preset and I'm using 500% with a radius of 0.3 pixels, which really gets into the, um, the fine detail of the image. And as you can see, it's actually affecting the luminosity of it. You know, I'm getting some pretty bright uh, whites in here. But the thing is though, is that when you print this, it's going to look terrible on screen, but when you print it, it actually looks better than a image that you sharpen for screen and then print it. You really have to tailor your sharpening settings for print as opposed to screen. It, it really does make a big difference. Now, the other cool thing about using Photoshop as opposed to Lightroom to be doing your sharpening is that you can mask the changes that you make because up to this point right now, all of the sharpening that we've been doing is global in nature. Like it's just, it's finding all the edges in the photo and is sharpening them. But what if you just wanted to isolate your subject and just apply sharpening to it? Well, I mean, it's actually a pretty straightforward thing to do. I mean, all I really have to do here is just duplicate this layer. Uh, I can get rid of the smart filter, drop this down to here. And then I can apply a mask to this. I can click on the mask, invert it so it's black. Black conceals, white reveals. Then I can get a paintbrush here set to white and zoom in to, you know, like this little area right here. And then I can just paint in, you know, wherever I actually want the sharpening to be. So, you know, this is all part of the process really of you know, drawing attention to your subject. That's really the whole point of sharpening is, you know, kind of in that same list of, of things like contrast in general. You're trying to create contrast in an image to help draw attention to your subject. So in addition to things like dodging and burning, sharpening is another way to kind of direct the eye where you want it to go. So you can be super selective with your sharpening. You can, you know, crank up the sharpening, get it nice and sharp, and then mask in the area that you want to be sharpened. And if your sharpening values are too much, just come over here to opacity and drop this down and then fine tune it, you know, by moving opacity back and forth to get, you know, the exact sharpening levels that you want. It's just a very tailored, very specific way of sharpening that you know, once you start doing it and you start seeing the side-by-side -side results that you're getting uh, from this approach and from taking the time to be tailoring your sharpening for each uh, resolution of image that you're creating, you will get better results than just simply sharpening your photos in Lightroom. Okay, so sharpening in general is a topic that, I mean, you could dedicate, you know, an entire afternoon talking about it. But hopefully I've answered the question and demonstrated for you why sharpening in Photoshop is a better approach um, than using sharpening in Lightroom. If you have your own approach, if you have your own way of sharpening, a method that you use that you prefer, that you're getting good results out of, and you would like to share it, please do. There's lots of other people who are subscribed to this channel, who are viewing this video and watching it, who would benefit from that knowledge and information if you would uh, care to take the time and leave a comment below. I would very much appreciate it and I'm sure other people following this channel would as well. So if you learned something new today or just enjoyed this video, by all means, please give this video a thumbs up. And I would also appreciate it if you subscribed as well. Subscribing will uh, notify you when new videos come out in the future. So if all of this is a topic of interest to you and you would like to keep in touch with me, then uh, hit the subscribe button below. Okay, that's it. Thanks for being here. I'll see you next time.